My name is Earl Williams, and on behalf of the Board of Directors of the United Church of Christ Office of Communication Incorporated, I want to welcome you to our 36th annual Everett C. Parker Ethics and Telecommunication Lecture and Awards Breakfast. This common ground is the ground we find and create together. We gather here because in some way we know that the tools we have developed for communication, information sharing, story sharing, and truth telling are tools that, although sometimes used for great harm, are even more powerful as implements that benefit our mutual welfare and our common life. But this year, the 50th anniversary of the Kerner Commission, it's worth recalling that amid that long legal battle, Everett was also a leader in promoting employment equity in the media. In 1967, the year before the Kerner Commission report, he called on the FCC to refuse to renew broadcast licenses if stations failed to prove that they did not discriminate in their hiring practices. Over the years, Kevin became frustrated about the lack of diversity in the film industry and the kinds of projects by black filmmakers that distributors were willing to show in theaters. He tried to raise money via Kickstarter to support his own documentary on that problem, but he could not secure the necessary financial backing. So instead, he decided to create a film festival to promote the kinds of films by African-American filmmakers that he wanted others to be able to see. The result was the DC Black Film Festival. And this means so much to me because it's a physical reminder that when I thought no one was watching, you were. In front of me stands my two children, Ella, six, and Kevin, four. And they are the future, and they are my why. The truth be told, the Girl Power uh, Film Block this past year at the DC Black Film Festival was done in an effort for my daughter to see herself on the big screen. Like Everett, she is strong-willed enough to do what it takes to change minds, to change actions, and therefore to change policies. And on top of all that, Gigi is a good friend and a trusted mentor to so many people in this room. So without further ado, I am very, very honored to present this year's Parker Award to Gigi Song. In these difficult times, when much of what we've worked for so hard and for so long is being dismantled, we should all strive to be like Everett. His was an uphill battle too, also during a dark time in this country's history. Nevertheless, he persisted, as we will too. I look out in the audience and I see so many of you who embody his work and embody his spirit. I'm so heartened by the new faces in the field who want to fight for social justice and see communications policy as the central part of that fight. I am delighted to introduce this year's Parker Lecturer because in recent years, she has probably been the most influential person in media justice and communication rights. Yet Helen Bruner manages to keep such a low profile that there are probably many people here today who are not aware of her vision and the influence she has had. I am so happy and grateful to be on this particular stage. I am humbled by the opportunity to deliver the 2018 Everett Parker Lecture. We need to come from love rather than fear and overwhelm, as Ashley Webb so eloquently pointed out. To paraphrase, we can't solve our current problems and challenges with the same thinking that created them. And the ground has shifted. There are many things that we used to do that don't work anymore, or they work differently. We desperately need the creativity that grows from mental, physical, and spiritual health. Uh, Greetings. Hello, everybody. My name is Sebi Medina Tayak. I'm from the Piscataway Indian Nation. I'm a member of the Beaver Clan. Um, the important thing about recognizing the land that we're on is that it subverts the colonial narrative of the city. Uh, beneath all this asphalt, concrete, and marble, 
my people are buried. Our, my ancestors, our old villages, our old way of life is just beneath the surface. And if you pay attention to the names of the places like Chesapeake, Potomac, Anacostia, those aren't English words, those are our words. So even though um, our language died with my great-grandfather in 1979, we all speak a little Piscataway every day. Oh, my God. 